All right, so I got a, a few questions about how to do the hardware install of the DS1155 BLHV servo. So I'm gonna go ahead and show that now so that I can show everybody that it, it does not need any special modifications to the chassis or to the front module or anything else. Namely, there's only two things that you've gotta keep into consideration. One is that the support bearing that goes, and if you can take that camera right here and just focus on that, Right here on the bell crank, this little cap, there is a bearing that goes in there, and that's just to help support the lateral movement of the servo horn. Well, it's not really necessary because the servo horn is still in that area, and it's still captured. It's just not gonna have the bearing, and that's a small price to pay for the additional power you get out of this servo. So let me go ahead and start removing it. Um, actually, let's go ahead and just power it up real quick and show that this thing does work. And if you focus right here with the camera, you'll see that here is the lithium ion battery already set up and plugged in. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and show that real quick. All right, so then you take right here. Servo works. And as you can see, it will Far left turn, right there on the line. Far right turn, right there on the line. And it actually functions just fine. Now I can power that down. Let me go ahead and start removing the eight screws that I need to. No need to focus on this. Can pop these out because they are kind of heavy. <clears throat> so I've removed the two top brace screws in the front. Now I'm going to remove the front module screws. So now this is freed up, we're going to flip it over now.
Ausfüllen. Okay, let's focus right here. So, here's what a lot of people have been asking me about. Yes, there is a two millimeter offset, but as you can see, I have not needed to cut anything on this chassis. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this up. I do have some blue Loctite on there right now. Okay. You don't wanna use anything much stronger than blue. You can use orange. Orange is right here. Um, you only want to use that if blue is not holding for some reason. And what I've just done is loosen that up off of the output gear of the Pro Modeler. Now I do have blue Loctite on the teeth as well. I do that for a reason because it prevents the teeth from splitting. Actually, I'm just gonna leave that on there for now because I don't wanna strip that. That was a little bit of work to get that on there perfectly. I'm gonna loosen these three. Now right here, this is the DS1155, if you can get a close-up of that and focus it. All right, so. That's the DS1155 BLHV servo. Now, this fits into the standard adapter just like any other one. It does have a beam modification. Not that it's truly necessary. It fits in there even with that thing not cut. And if you have to, you can use a Dremel and shave it down if you really wanted to. It's only on the one side. Now, as you can see, just by comparison to a Savox, <clears throat> you're gonna see right here that the output gear is further this direction by two millimeters. So that's pretty negligible. However, it does create the issue with the servo horn lining up under the servo um, saver assembly. Uh, and I'll show you again when I reinstall it. But this small difference right here fits into this groove still, even with that two millimeter offset. So again, this is pulled out no modifications, didn't need to cut anything. And we can put it right back in and just tuck these wires in here. This right here is just a little zip tie that I have just to do wire management. It's not anything of any significance. It's already plugged into the receiver. I am using the piggyback method that I showed earlier on the other video, getting it all together. Now see how right here, everything is flush. Everything is flush right here. No mods necessary. And then it just pushes back here. And then if we get sort of right here up against it, we don't need to cut anything because it slides right in there without any problem. And it's not lopsided. It's not leaning anywhere. It's, it's just set up and ready to go. Okay, so let's go ahead and screw this back in now. I'm going to turn the speed down on these, and I'm going to uh, have the drag way up. Don't want to strip anything. So as you can see, it's right back where it was. Everything fits. All right, so now we're gonna reinstall brace. That's all the way in. And now I'm going to take the fit module. I'm going to slide it over.
This part is always a pain for me no matter what. I'm gonna pop it on the ground like I normally do. Just follow me here. I'm gonna flip it around facing towards me. I'm gonna set it on the ground right here for a second. And I'm just gonna push on it while I spin the wheels. And this generally helps me get that lock in there. slides in without any issue. Now we can come back right here. So it is flush against the rest of the chassis on the front module. And then right here, I did take out that bearing that I showed you at the beginning. It slides in still. It's just not necessary to use that bearing because of that offset and everything still functions. Now with this link, I've compensated for that 46 millimeter steering link and turn it into a 48 simply by twisting. Just all you have to do is twist these because it's just a metal steel rod with two rod ends and they thread in. So just loosen it up by a couple of turns. It's still perfectly tight on there. Of course, it's not gonna turn anymore once it's in here. Use a ruler or whatever you've got and just make sure that it's 48 after that. Your alignment here should be straight still when you put everything back in and that's exactly what I've done. And I'll go ahead and put it back in now. right there okay and I'm just gonna drop that screw back in okay all right now it's just a matter of putting in the rest of those eight screws on the top and then I'll do the bottom last. And with this, we're just going to do a um, <clears throat> crisscross.
that's it. We're done.